Hi guys, in today's tutorial you're going to learn how to easily pass through a USB controller. I will also show you how to easily identify each USB controller so you don't use the one Unraid does for its flash drive. Cracky. Okay guys, so let's have a look at this Windows 10 template here. You can see down at the bottom that we can pass through various USB devices that may be connected to our server. And underneath that you can see this here, the other PCI devices, and it says there's none available. Well this is actually for passing through other PCI devices such as USB controllers, but they're not actually natively listed in here. There's a couple of things we have to do to make them appear in the GUI. And some of you may be wondering why we'd actually want to pass through a USB controller when we can so easily just pass through USB devices in the GUI to the VM. Well yes, we can easily select the USB devices in the template, but what happens when the VM started and we decide we want to add an extra USB device? Maybe you want to plug in a USB flash drive or something. Well, we'd actually have to stop the VM and then add it to the template. So that's why we want to pass through a USB controller, because then we can just hot swap devices in the USB port, just in the same way that we're used to on a real physical machine. And the second reason for this is some devices just don't like being passed through as an individual USB device. They just don't work properly. An example of this is a USB sound card. Often they don't work well when passed through as an individual device. And also the virtual reality headset, the HTC Vive. This doesn't really work if you plug it in and pass through the USB ports as individual devices. Now we do have to be a bit careful when passing through a USB controller, especially if we're passing through a controller that's part of our motherboard. Don't forget that Unraid uses a USB flash drive to actually boot from, so when passing through a USB controller from the motherboard, we have to make sure that we don't pass through the controller that's attached to the USB flash drive. So let's click on Tools and then System Devices and let's have a look there. So looking through the PCI devices, I can see here, for example, I've got a USB controller. But how do I know if my Unraid USB stick is plugged into this? I don't at all. And even if we scroll down to the bottom of the page, we can see our USB devices, but it doesn't really tell us much. Because we can't tell here which USB devices are plugged into which controller. And therefore we can't tell which controller our USB flash drive that Unraid is plugged into. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make a connection to our Unraid server using SSH or Telnet. So if you're using a Mac then you can use Terminal like I am now, or if you're using a Windows PC then just use a program like Putty. So once you're logged into the server you're going to have to run the following command. Now it's a very long command so just copy and paste it from the description of the video. I'll just make this box a little bit bigger so it's easier to see everything. So once you've pasted that in, just press enter. And now you'll be able to see some very detailed information about the USB devices on your server. Okay, so now we can easily see all of the USB buses connected to our server. And next to the USB bus number, we can also see the associated USB controller. And then next to that, we can see which IOMMU group that USB controller is a part of. So let's have a look at bus 1 for example. We can see the devices connected to bus 1 listed here. Well in fact USB bus 1 has actually no external USB devices plugged in. It's basically just the USB root hub. And we can see the controller ID is here. And also it's in IOMMU group 21. So now looking at USB bus 2, we can see here that this is the number of the USB controller here. And this particular controller is in IOMMU group 26. And I know that my USB flash drive I boot on RAID from is a SanDisk USB flash drive. So I know that this is my USB flash drive for Unraid. So I definitely can't pass through this USB controller at all. So let's move down to bus 3. Here we can see that it's in IOMMU group 18 and this is the controller ID. And if you also look at bus 4, you'll see the same controller ID number as in bus 4 and it's the same IOMMU group. 
So this controller basically controls bus 3 and bus 4 on my server. And here you'll also see the devices I've got plugged into this controller. I've got a Bluetooth dongle here. And I've got a Logitech unifying receiver for my keyboard and mouse. And here's my UPS that's plugged in here. So basically this controller I could easily pass through without any issues because there's nothing important plugged into it. But actually the USB controller I want to pass through is actually bus 5 and bus 6 below here. And actually this USB controller isn't attached to my motherboard. It's an external PCI Express USB controller that I've recently bought. You can see here it's in IO MMU Group 28. And the reason I bought this PCI Express USB controller is because its chipset is natively compatible with OSX and so I want to better pass that through to my OSX VMs. So I know that my Unraid USB flash drive is here, connected to bus 2 to this USB controller. But if you didn't actually know that, the easiest thing to do is to unplug every USB device from your server except for the flash drive. And so with all of the USB devices unplugged, just run the command again. And then obviously it will be the only external USB device connected to any of the USB buses. Now there's a couple of other things we need to check. We need to check that our USB controller is in its own IO MMU group. And we also need to check that the USB controller is able to be reset. So to find out this, we just need to paste in this next command. So copy and paste this from the description. And now what you'll see is happening is all of the IO MMU groups are being listed along with the devices which is inside of them. So let's just scroll back up to the top of the list. So here's my USB controller I want to pass through. It's in IO MMU group 28. So let's scroll down through the list and see if we can find that. So here's group 28 with my USB controller here, the Fresco Logic USB controller. I can see here that the USB controller is in its own IO MMU group. There's nothing else there at all in group 28. So we know that's going to pass through absolutely fine. And now if you look slightly to the left of the controller, you'll see the word in brackets reset. And this is good because this means that this particular USB controller can be reset. So what do I mean by supporting being reset? Well, when a VM shuts down, all the devices are deinitialized, ready for this shutdown, and therefore they're no longer functional. They must be power cycled before they can resume normal operation. So if a USB controller, or well any device actually, won't reset, it will hang in a shutdown state. And that's why some people have to restart their server in order for the device to be able to start up again in a VM. So having run this command and being able to see the reset next to the actual device is very useful. So let's just go back and look at some of the motherboard controllers. Let's look at this controller in group 21 here. Now we can see as well as being in its own IO MMU group, it also supports being reset. So this controller would be a good candidate to be passed through as well. But let's have a look at this other controller here, the one in group 18. Now we can see although it's in its own IO MMU group and it can be passed through, it wouldn't be a good candidate because it won't be able to be reset when the VM is restarted. Anyway, so we'll go back to the USB controller that I've decided that I want to pass through to my VM the Fresco Logic USB controller. And to be able to pass this through using the GUI in Unraid, we need to isolate this from Unraid. And we do this by adding a line in our syslinux config file. So on the main tab of your Unraid GUI, you'll see the flash drive listed about halfway down. So just click onto the word where it says flash. Now, once you've got this syslinux configuration file visible, look for the part that says menu default, because it's this part of the syslinux configuration file that we're going to have to edit. And what we're going to add goes between the words append and the init rd. So let's just open a text editor, and then we'll prepare what we're going to paste in the middle there. And now type in the following text. vfio pci dot IDS equals. So now bring back up the SSH window and find the device that you want to pass through. And then here you'll see a number at the end, which is the ID number of this device. So now we want to copy this number out from here 
and we want to paste it just next to the equal sign here. Okay, now copy all of that text and then paste it after the word append. Then just click on to apply and then click done. And just for this to take effect, we're just going to have to stop the array and then restart the server. So with the server rebooted now, we can have a look at one of the VM templates. Let's look at this Windows 10 one here. So let's click on to edit and then scroll down to the bottom. And you can see now that our USB controller is available to select any other PCI devices. So let's just tick it and then click update. And now let's just start up the VM. And now in our Windows VM, let's go to the Device Manager. And here we can see in the Device Manager, the Fresco Logic USB 3 controller is successfully passed through to the VM. And so now I'll just plug in a Bluetooth dongle. And there we've got the Bluetooth in, and I'll just take that out. And back in. And so everything's working absolutely as it should be and we've passed through a USB controller to a VM. Okay guys, so just before I wrap this video up, there's just one last thing I'd like to show you. For those of you guys who know how to use Squid's user scripts plugin, I have a user script that will do everything that was done during the SSH sessions in this tutorial. So if you don't know how to use Squid's user scripts plugin, then please ignore this part. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to be able to go into depth as to how to install it and how to install scripts into his plugin. But for those of you who know how to do it, then please put this script onto your flash drive and you'll find the script in the description of the video below. Then just click on run to run the devices info script. And then at the top here you'll see all the USB information that we got from the first command. And then beneath that you'll be able to see all the IO MMU groups and whether the devices can be reset or not. So guys, there we are at the end of another video. Um, I hope you found it useful and I hope you liked this video. Um, if you did, then please, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos from me in the future, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And anyway, guys, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you all in the next video.